So we started this project with a topology study, similar to what we did on the P5X. So we were looking for areas on the bike where we could uh, gain back a little bit of aerodynamic performance, but not impact the structure at the same time. So you can see this on the final product, um, some of the key areas that we found. The handlebar, of course, there's a lot of room for aero gains there. So you see that little bit of shaping uh, through that bar. You can also see in the seat tube, and this time into the seat post as well, we have that D shape. And lastly, you can see in the down tube that we've done a bit of shaping to the lower portion of it to get uh, a D shape in there. Clearly with the new R series, we've upped our game with respect to stiffness, as well as with respect to weight. But how those two factors interact with one another is sometimes poorly understood. Uh, with the previous R series, we felt that we had really pushed the boundaries with weight, as well as with the wall thickness of the tubes themselves. And the challenge with that is that as the wall thickness starts to decrease, you get into a situation where the bike starts to become somewhat fragile and a little bit less usable. As a function of the confidence gained on the previous R series, we realized that the weight was sufficiently low while still giving the rider su uh, sufficient levels of toughness for normal use, particularly with respect to the Pro Tour where there's lots of crashes and potential for misuse. When we focused on the new bikes, uh, looking at the R5, we rather than focusing on the weight with the R5, we instead focused on the stiffness, increasing it by approximately 20%. When we looked at the R3, rather than focusing on the stiffness in that case, which we felt was already fairly good from the previous generation, we instead focused on diminishing the weight, and we did quite a good job of that, dropping approximately 200 grams from the frame.